Hello everyone, in this video we'll be experimenting analog to digital conversion with the MSP430 microcontroller. We'll set up a circuit to measure the voltage levels of a potentiometer with a multimeter. And by writing C code in the Code Composer Studio for the ADC module of the microcontroller and serial monitor, we'll be able to compare the results in real time. Before the experiment, we'll see the definitions of the analog and digital signals, sampling, quantization, and conversion concepts. We'll learn the registers involved and how they are used to configure the ADC module. And before the experiment, we'll see how to set up the circuit using a potentiometer, a shift register, and an LED array to create a voltage level monitor. Let's start with the basics of analog and digital signals. Here in the first graph, we can see a sine wave, which has a frequency of one Hertz. This is our analog signal. And for every T, it has a value in the Y axis, meaning that its resolution is infinite. However, it's impossible to store such an infinite number of values in digital systems. So we do the digital conversion and the conversion starts with sampling. At a certain frequency, we start to take samples from the analog signal. Here in the second graph, we can see the values taken at 20 Hertz, meaning that we take 20 samples in one second. You can imagine that as you increase the sampling frequency, the discrete signal will look more similar to the analog signal that we want to represent. In the third graph, we can see that the sampled value is held until the next sampling time. Now let's give another similar example, which will refer to our ADC example in our microcontroller. In this example, the amplitude of our signal varies between 3.3 and 0. Let's assume that this is the voltage level changing on a potentiometer of which VCC is connected to 3.3 volts and the ground is connected to 0 volts. The value starts from the maximum value of 3.3 volts and varies like a sine wave with the difference that we only have positive values here. Actually, it's the absolute value of the sine wave. In this example, the sampling frequency is doubled compared to the previous example. So we are taking 40 samples a second and T is between 0 0.25 and 1 0.25 seconds. Now let's take a look at the values of the sample signal at these sample times. Here in this table, we are observing the time interval between 0 0.25 and 0.5 seconds. A total of 11 values which varies between 3.3 .3 and 0. And if you continue to observe the time interval of that 5 and that 75, we will see the same values in the reverse order. This means that if you want to sample this signal, we only need 11 slots or values. Let's see this in detail. Here we can see the 11 values that will be sufficient to map all the sampled values for our signal. And in case you wanted to map these into a digital form, you could use a 4 bit structure to do a mapping like this. So the numbers from 0 to 10 would be mapped to these values. This could be a representation of the signal in digital form. However, it would be very ineffective and would work only for this signal and for this sampling frequency only. It would never be able to approximate a non-periodic random signal. That's why quantization is needed after the sampling. Let's see what this means. Let's think of a better way to represent the analog signal in digital form. We've again done the sampling and we have values to represent. And let's assume that we have a 3-bit conversion structure or to name it in a better way, a 3-bit analog digital converter. And since we know that our signal can get a maximum value of 3.3 and a minimum value of zero, we can evenly distribute these eight slots in this interval. Now that we have only eight values to map our sampled signal to, we will represent our 11 sampled values with the values that are closest. This process is called quantization. Let's see our mapped values. You can see that we have lost some information in the quantization process. If you use more bits during the conversion, our resolution will be better. The MSP430 uses a 10 bit ADC, meaning that the interval between the maximum and minimum reference values will be mapped to 1024 values. Now let's take a look at the ADC in the MSP430 G2553. The ADC 10 module uses the SAR, a successive approximation register method for the ADC operation. SAR conversion uses iteration for forming the digital representation of the analog signal. It generates the MSP first and by each step of iteration, it continues until it gets the LSP. ADC can be triggered by the timer module. We can check the user guides pages 534 and 552 for this topic. Now let's see the properties of the ADC 10 registers. With the ADC 10 CTL0 register, voltage reference value, sample and hold time, sampling rate, reference voltage output, internal reference buffer, 
multiple sample and conversion, reference generators, SAR core activation, and interrupt capabilities can be set. SRefX is used for the voltage reference values. You can see the sections of the ADC 10 CTL0 register in this picture, which shows the registers window in CCS. ADC 10 SHTX is used for sampling and hold times. If you continue to examine the ADC 10 CTL0 register, we see the following settings. Now let's open the user guide and see the explanations there for this register. In the user guide, page number 553, we can see the ADC 10 CTL0 register. You can see that it's a 16-bit register and the most significant part is the SRFX, which is for selecting the reference. We are going to be using 000 because we are going to be using the internal references as VCC and VSS. ADC 10 sample and hold times, ADC 10 sampling rate, reference output, reference burst, multiple sample and conversion, F2 underscore 5 volts, reference generator on, ADC 10 on, and ADC 10 interrupt enable. So we are going to be using this ADC 10 on as well. And ADC 10 IFG is for the interrupt flag. ENC is for enabling the conversion. We are going to be using this in our code as well. And ADC 10 SC stands for start conversion. We are going to be using this one right before starting the conversion. If you take a look at the second most important register, ADC 10 CTL1 for the ADC 10 module, we can see several settings here. Input channel X is used for setting the input pins for ADC. Pins A0 to A7 can be selected. The related pin should also be enabled in the ADC 10 AE register for analog input. Input channel 10 is used for internal temperature sensor. SHS selects the sample and hold source. ADC 10 DF sets the data format. ISSH enables or disables invert sample hold signal. ADC 10 DIV is for dividing the clock value. ADC 10 SL is for selecting the clock source. We will use ADC 10 oscillator in our example, which is the default one. We will be using CONSEC underscore zero to select single conversion from a single channel. However, since we will be doing it in an infinite loop, we will see when the values are updated. ADC 10 BZ is set when the ADC is in operation. We will use this property so that we will perform no action while ADC is busy. And maybe the most important register for the ADC 10 module is the ADC 10 MEM register, since it holds the result of the conversion. You can easily imagine that the value of this register will be between 0 and 3 FF hexadecimal, or 1023 in decimal. Now, let's open the user guide for the last time and see these sections there. In the user guide, page number 555, you can see the ADC 10 CTL1 register. This is also a 16-bit register and the most significant part is containing the input channel. You can select one of the 8 pins. Or for example, as we mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation, you can choose 10 for the internal temperature sensor. SHSX is for sample and hold source select, ADC 10 data format, invert signal sample and hold, ADC 10 clock divider, ADC 10 SLX for clock source selection. We will use the default one, ADC 10 oscillator. CONSEC X is for conversion sequence mode select. We are going to be using single channel, single conversion. And ADC 10 busy is indicating that ADC 10 is busy. Another register is ADC 10 AE0, which is for enabling the inputs. So whatever channel we selected here in the input channel, we should also enable it in the ADC 10 AE0 register. And let's take a look at the ADC 10 mem register, which is holding the conversion results. You can see that it has 10 bits for this. Now let's see the circuit setup that we are going to use in our CCS example. Actually, it's nearly the same with our shift register and MSP430 video, except that this one also has a 10K potentiometer of which the output is connected to P1.3. Here I again drew the circuit in Fritzing so you can see better for your setup. You need to pay attention that we are using 5V output from the launchpad for the shift register. However, we are using the 3.3V output from the launchpad for the potentiometer. 
In our experiment, we are going to connect a multimeter to measure the output from a potentiometer and at the same time, by using the ADC module of the MSP430, we are going to get this potentiometer output to the P1 that report on the launchpad and do the ADC conversion and we are going to compare the values that we see in the multimeter and in the serial monitor for the MSP430. In addition to this, we are going to turn on the LEDs that are connected to the shift register in a way that as the voltage of the potentiometer increases, the LEDs will act as a voltage level monitor. Now let's open CCS and see our code and experiment. Before I start explaining the code, let me mention that the link to the code is provided in the video description. In the beginning of our code, we are including the libraries that we are going to be using. Then in line 7, I'm defining an array for the LED array that I'm going to use as a voltage level monitor. In lines 8, 9 and 10, I'm creating character arrays that I'll use while converting the voltage values to characters for printing on the serial monitor. In lines 11 to 14, I'm again defining some constant text that I'll print on the serial monitor. Lines 15 to 17 are for defining the connections from the shift register. From line 19 to 22, the functions declarations are given. Shift register clock, storage register clock and send bit are for the shift register and serial output is for the serial monitor. In the main function, until line 38, the settings for the UART communications is done. The baud rate is 19,200. The part related with the analog digital converter is between lines 41 and 44, where SREF underscore zero is for reference voltage selection, which will be 3.3 .3 and zero maximum and minimum values. ADC10 SHD underscore two is for choosing sample and hold times as 16 times ADC10 clock. ADC10 on enables the ADC. In the ADC10 CTL1 register, we choose the channel three as input P1.3, SHS underscore zero is for sample and hold source. ADC 10 div underscore zero does no division to the clock. Clock source is the modulus clock. And with consec underscore zero, we set single channel, single conversion. ADC 10 input enable control register sets the analog input for P1.3. And then we enable the conversion in line 44. In our while one infinite loop, we start the conversion. And while the converter is not busy, we do the following. We first assign the converted value from ADC10 mem register to memval variable. Then we use the floor function to get the integer value. Then we use a workaround in line 52 to get the fractional part again as integer, which we'll print after the dot. Then in lines 53, 54, and 55, we convert these integers to characters, and in line 56 and 57, we print these in the serial monitor using the serial underscore output function that can be seen at the end of the code. And starting from line 58, we level the voltage in intervals so that we can turn on the LEDs using the data to send array. Now let's run our code and observe what happens as we play with the potentiometer. I'm going to use PuTTY for connecting to our device. We are going to make a serial connection. My device is on COM3 and my speed was set to 19,200. Let's start the code by clicking resume. And let's increase this font size. Okay, you can see that we see the ADC 10 mem value, which is printed on the terminal as well, and it's around 8, 7, 10, etc. The potentiometer is at its lowest value. Okay. Now let's increase the voltage on the potentiometer and see what happens. As I increase the voltage, we can observe it in our multimeter and we can observe it in our terminal as well. Let's continue increasing it. And as you can see, as I increase it, the LED array is also turning on gradually. And we can see that we are observing 1.9, something like 1.9 volts in the terminal and also the same in the multimeter as well. 
I'm going to increase it to its maximum value. I think that was a problem with the resistor connection. Okay, you can see that we are observing 3.23 volts in the multimeter and we are observing nearly the same in our terminal as well. And we can see that the ADC 10 mem value is nearly at its maximum, 1023. Actually, we see 1023 at some times, but it's becoming updated very quickly. Now let's decrease it gradually and see, observe the multimeter and the output in the terminal. You can see that they are more or less becoming the same. And at the minimum level, we have only one LED on. The value that we see on the multimeter is 0 0.03. And what we see on the terminal is something around 0 0.4, 0 0.3. This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions and comments, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in another video. Bye.